Okay, so let's get to drawing here. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to sketch, as I usually don't, but uh, let's look for something. Starting off with a very light lines. For me, starting with light lines isn't really about um, seeking to leave them open to be restated later, necessarily. It's more just, um, I want to work very low contrast in the beginning so that I don't feel committed to my idea. You can also get harder pencil grades by just working very lightly, very softly. It makes me more available, makes it more likely that I'll ch change things and make them better as I go. So I know that you can barely see this on your end, but that's okay because neither can I. So I gave myself a moment here already right off the bat where it would be smart to go get reference if I move forward with this idea. I'm looking at, again, I know you can barely see this, but I've implied that this creature has sort of a lobster tail that it's curling up under itself in between its legs. And I don't actually know what a lobster tail looks like off the top of my head. So that would be something to go grab reference for, but I just dropped in my cartoon understanding of that shape that I have in my head for now. I don't want to give this guy humanoid hands. I'm just giving him some sort of disturbing flipperettes or something like that. Keep it gross. So we'll grab a darker pencil in a second. I'll grab my favorite tool, 0.5 HB mechanical pencil. And just start goosing around a little bit with that. You know, like, like how a goose does, you know, how, how geese, like they draw a lot. They like buy tables and, you know, spend hours making drawings and things, you know. Let's just do what they do for a little bit. Honk. So I'm just gonna start deciding what some of those loosey-goosey shapes I made were. And uh, I'm not really thinking about anything right now except making them interesting. Maybe interesting is, maybe interesting has too positive a valence for this situation. Maybe I'm just trying to make the shapes um, surprising. They need some sort of weird waggle, some sort of twist, some sort of turn, a little bit of design to them, you know, a couple straights versus a couple curves, or if it's all waggly, maybe some of it is arranged geometrically and the rest of it less geometrically, just more completely freely waggly. Waggly, very technical term, very technical term. If you don't understand what I mean by waggly, please, uh, please go look it up. You know, you're really behind on your art vocabulary. And uh, honestly, the, the absolute basics like that, just they need to be covered before you can even take a stab at drawing anything fun. So get your stuff together, go figure out what waggly means. Do I know what crab mandibles actually look like? No. But I remember from seeing crabs that there's just a bunch of weird interlocking shapes there. So I'm taking a guess. This is a sketch. Now, in these early stages of a sketch, one of the best things you can do for the readability of your drawing is just maintain a respect for the hierarchy of line weight. So you can see on these plates, even though these plates really aren't resolved, I don't really know what they look like in any specific sense, I am putting darker lines on the undersides of these plates and where these plates would be facing a generalized light source, you know, just one that comes from the top, I'm letting those lines get a little thinner and a little lighter. You know, that way, even without any real or substantive value, uh, we are still implying the effects of light on these forms. 
some things like this heavier plate that's sort of making these pointy shoulder shapes up here on him. Things like this, you generally want, um, you want to make sure that you communicate the thickness, right? So I wouldn't want to just throw a thin, hard line on the underside of that plate there. Maybe that would be there right at the bottom. But first I want to resolve that this has like a, you know, if this guy were real and he were, I don't know, bigger than a human being, the edge of that plate would be like that thick or something like that. Throwing down some random spines. You want to be careful that they're not all equal. Not the same length and size. Not on an organic form anyway. And there's nothing to fear here, you know? Obviously, you know, he's very scary, right? Obviously, he is a truly horrifying abomination. You know, he's a sin against nature and whatever the underlying nature of reality is and a sin against everything that we hold dear and value both as people but as also as sentient beings, right? So he's, a, he's an abomination in every imaginable regard. So he's quite scary, but there's nothing scary about drawing. You're allowed to just feel completely relaxed while you draw, and you can just have fun and look around for things. I started passing some value down here around the abdomen because we implied a strong value statement up here under the pad. And I should say, this is all still pretty low contrast. This would all still be quite easy to erase. You know, if I was really going to push this drawing all the way, I already, I just know from experience that, you know, this value is, this whole value around here is, it's not going to be enough. I'm going to have to go into it hopefully once, but uh, history shows probably multiple times and tone down the value of the whole thing to make the contrast level work throughout the whole drawing. Now on the ridge of this lobster tail, I'm going to try to, as we were talking about before, not repeat any spine lengths. Not a complete success there, but better than not having had it in mind at all. Some of the spacings between spines here got a little samey, so that's something to look out for. Trying to vary your shapes from imagination is really a, that's the bread and butter of imagination or really designing while you're working from imagination. When you don't have a reference in front of you to uh, remind you of variety all the time, your brain has a real tendency to just even everything out, make equal spacing everywhere. Brain loves it, at least while it's drawing. It, it's weird because like your brain wants to do that all the time whenever you're making anything, but uh, it's always looking for not that when it's looking for well-designed and beautiful objects. It's weird. I should say that on these lines, like this one here that I put under the plate and the ones that I'm putting in around the eyes right now, I'm going a little darker there um, than I would if I was just drawing, not recording, you know? I'm doing that because, uh, you know, I'm just trying to push the contrast a little early so that things show up on camera. But um, I would push off the dark darks in a drawing even even further down the line if I was just uh, chilling and drawing from on my own. Go even slower with it. You want to really take your time getting to that and uh, instead put your mind in the place where it is really enjoying just um, designing shapes, crafting shapes, you know? Kind of like how these read as like, pectoral plates for sure, but they're like so much smaller than the width of his chest. That makes me happy, actually. I kind of like that as a design thing. I want to I wanna play with that more. All right, so let's get out here to the, uh, to the limbs and to the top of his head, just so that we can see the silhouette of this guy. Mm, big polypy spine there. Yeah, let's just darken all this a bit so that we can actually see and assess how we're doing. 
silhouette wise. Like a round thing there. Eh, just a round thing. Eh. I sort of took a path here with this shape that uh, really doesn't make it look like the little flipperettes that I had in mind. Again, a good thing to go get reference for. But, uh, you know, I'm not because uh, I am truly a hack for the history books, man. I am, a, I am the hack of destiny. I am the foretold lord of all hacks. It was prophesied that I would come one day and lead all hacks to their rightful place in the halls of Hack Holler, where we will be posted up for all eternity, right alongside of criticisms and judgments of our detractors. It kind of looks like this is like a big, uh, because I didn't design the, um, sort of the curvature of the tail underneath well enough. Uh, it kind of looks like a, like it's a, what, what would you even call it? Like one of those censorship leaks that they would put on like old marble statues. And he's like, he's just putting it up there to make himself decent. Yeah, that's, that's my design. So maybe that's the official, maybe that's officially what this drawing is actually about now. That's not my head cannon, that's the cannon. It's coming out of my head. I know I said that we'd get out there to his limbs and then I completely forgot. So let's just uh, whoop, put something down. It can be whatever. Cool, man. That doesn't really look like a, like a knee pad and a leg going back, does it? Oh yeah, let's give him Let's have him have more of his legs out so he's not bipedal. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple legs, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, now I'm feeling it. At least that's giving me something. That's a little... I haven't done a drawing quite with that particular effect before. It's sort of got, sort of got the... Um, the centaur thing going on, right? He's like a, a crabatar. No, but he's not mixed with anything else, right? Maybe he's like a he's a crab up top and a lobster down south. I don't know. There's probably some species of crab that has like a long lobster tail looking thing like that. Just basing that off how generally there seems to be uh, every possible thing in the animal world. There's stuff that seems just Utterly unbelievable, so... Why not? Why not a crab with a lobster tail? Why even have lobsters? Just have that crab over and over and over again, forever. I can get a little more, uh, like, placement on the ground, I think, if I lower this first leg so that it's like... That one's the most forward, then this one can be number two. And this guy can be your number three, and then this guy can be who cares, and this guy can be like, it's just a crab, Steven. Just draw it. Just putting a little indication of a cast shadow. Or who knows, it could be an occlusion shadow underneath this guy. So that we kind of just put the ground plane in there a bit. You know, that tends to show how poorly you place your legs when you do that. And uh, it certainly does that in this case. So I'm gonna pop that tail forward with a much darker pencil. I'm not trying to trace the lines that I put back. I'm just trying to go a little faster than my eye can keep up with and redrawing it. That's something I picked I picked up from uh, Steven Silver, listening to a video with him once, and he was talking how he tries to never, uh, tries to never let his brain go into tracing mode when he's cleaning things up. 
He just, um, there may be something is already there. There is maybe something that's already um, a guideline for him that he already put down. But when the line's going down, he is just drawing anew. ABD, always be drawing. All right, so now I'm going to get a little, I'm getting bored suddenly. So I'm just going to do some stuff over here. Oh. It's putting some more defined dark shapes onto each form. Implying a little bit of cast shadow on each one of these. Just a little touch there, a little touch there, a little touch there. And then going dark again at the bottom in some spots to let it imply a cast shadow maybe. So it's like, ooh, tiny core shadow, ooh, little cast shadow. Just passing that around. I'm using the blending stump here to knock in some halftone shapes on these forms. Where I know like, I know this is real shadow. Well, I don't know that, I'm deciding that, right? I'm making that up. I know I want this to be real shadow because it's rolling away towards the bottom of the form. And then up here, I don't really want that form to be made of a true shadow. That would make it look too much like the, the form is like punching all the way in. It would exaggerate it too much. So I'm putting it in with the stump to still figure out the shape of that half tone and to get it in there. But it will be a higher value and softer, so it will not read like True Shadow. Hopefully, if things go well for us. So yeah, this is just a different kind of drawing. You know, this is like drawing on the insides of the forms. And I like to take a little detour into this land and just start doing it. Whenever I get bored on a sketch, I would avoid doing it too early when um, when I'm doing something that is going to be more developed. And then like this spike that I drew here, this ill-advised, just, I don't know, antenna thing that's popping out there. I'm just going to put a cast shadow under that onto the arm. That always makes things feel more realistic when things cast shadow. When things cast shadows onto themselves. When we see that, we think, ah, real. I like to find reasons to put those cast shadows in. And I have a pretty high tolerance for putting them in places that they shouldn't be. Uh, just because uh, they sell it so much. So even if they're technically wrong and shouldn't be there, it's like, they're so valuable as reality selling tools that I want to abuse them. Now this is a this is a mess down here. All these just lame, same shapes just popping out, being gross, not designed, and not put down an effective design indication there. And even though I'm saying it out loud and recognizing that it's ineffective and bad and dumb, I'm still not fixing it. And that is because I am a very, 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 very bad person. Just, oh. How do you do that, you know? How do you know part of a drawing isn't working and just keep doing it instead of like throwing down the pencil and going to the kitchen and just eating ice cream and then sitting on the couch and thinking about every bad thing you've ever done and every wrong thing you've ever said to someone and how you really should have made different choices in your life. And, you know, you really don't deserve to have anything good to happen anyway, or to ever make a good drawing because just look at the way that you behave. It's like, obviously that's what a good artist would do. What a good person would do. But here I am 
just drawing instead. What a dick. Now, if you're demarcating your core shadows as like their own step, kind of like I'm doing here, like you want to do, well, not exactly what I'm doing here, but you just want to keep in mind uh, just drawing them as interesting shapes, like lay them in as something specific. Like right here, this one has this hooky shape that I implied. It looks like a crook or something like that. And then it comes down here and it widens into this triangular shape. And I've implied that this side of the core shadow is more crisp. And then this one is like, has a really soft gradation out. So it has a variety of shape, a variety of thickness, and it has a variety of edges, you know? So, so again, I'll put it down like a, maybe a rectangular core shadow indication here. And then uh, I'll have it do a little inverse jaggedy there. And then maybe like a, like a crescent moon shape there. These can definitely reach a point where they're getting a little too ridiculous, like they're too jaunty and weird and attention grabbing. But, um, you know, it really depends on if you hit that point where they seem too jaunty and uh, and then you know you're not going to go much further with the drawing, you might want to calm them down a bit. But if you are planning on spending much longer on the drawing, I would recommend that you leave them jaunty because uh, all exciting things in a drawing, the more and more that you work the drawing over, they disappear, they fall apart, and they get watered down. So you want to put things down as exciting as you can bear in the beginning. And then just uh, deal with the existential dread of watching them get mysteriously diluted and be unexciting. Even though you're putting in more and more effort. Figure drawing, pencil hold to try to get a little more just out of these silhouettes. And you gotta be cautious here if you're a scaredy cat, because uh, sometimes when you mix, you know, medium and, I mean, dark and medium pencil grades, they can have a bunch of interactions that make it seem like they're, um, you know, your drawings are getting dirty. They can do weird things together. Uh, in a way that you usually doesn't happen with if you just stick to one pencil grid throughout the whole drawing. You can usually mitigate those effects if you draw slowly and you build up your values slowly. But that is a patient man's game. I am not the most patient of men. So I'm locking in some of these silhouettes with the really dark pencil. Because, uh... You know, if I'm doing it down in uh, in the leg areas, it's like those areas are less important. So if I'm bumping up the contrast that much down there, it's got to be happening on the more interesting parts. And you notice that like when I did here, like I'm as I'm solidifying that silhouette, I am also letting it uh, go into the interior of the figure so that it's actually describing shapes and volumes on the inside and not just sort of... Uh, being a design element all along the outside of the figure. I mean, you know, you can still get an amazing, you can still get amazing effects just letting it do that. It just looks more uh, decorative, generally. Alphonse Mucha did that all the time, where his outside silhouette was super bold and really did just stay outside. But I tend to like letting it interlock and go back in and out of the figure. And, Add some contrast in there as well. And just, uh, you know, keep it a little dare to care. And you definitely got to have your mileage for throwing these sorts of lines. Figure drawing is good for that. Woo but um, you do want to just let go and kind of let things and every now and then, you know, you kind of, it gets away from you. But hey, that's half the fun, right? <laughs> so let's even let it do its work on these uh, chest plates. Now these extra dark lines, you can also, you know, e even if you 
again, this is the kind of thing I would say for much later in a more developed drawing if this wasn't just a sketch. But um, even if you put them in in the middle, you know, if you press really hard with a stump, you can kind of get them to broaden up and become value shapes. You gotta press really, really hard. But you can kind of blend them out a little bit and then get more room to model them. This is good. I needed to get my uh, I needed to get my drawing of a crab man out for this year. I don't like these guys at all. Now those guys were put down hard with the edge of that dark pencil, so they're not going to erase cleanly. But screw it. I'm going to put a there. Just a more defined tenticular shape. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Long forms. Long brown forms on this formy tentacle. And a little bit of shadow. I'm not gonna back. Not gonna back. And checking it out. Some of this. A little bit of that. It's barely making a difference. Bringing out the big boy stump. This, uh, you know, if time allowed, these uh, crustacean-y plate arms would be a great place to just knock in some dimpled textures and stuff like that. Those hard chitin shells are always good for some dimpled textures. So I don't know, I've been dancing all around that stuff, all this stuff right in the middle of his body because uh, I designed it so stupidly. But uh, let's just make it anything because, well, seriously, it's just got to be something. I'm just doing everything I can to not just slow down, calm down, and actually design it. Everything in my power. And I'll just do the actual work. You know, these it's nice when the these crustacean shapes have like a a nice bulge in the center of the form. And then they have that nice lip on the outside, but the the trick and the thing I'm avoiding plotting out is that you don't want that lip on the outside to just be all one thickness one same shape you gotta get the variety in there and we drew many plates so that is begging for a bit of a time investment from us you know the multiplying villainies of nature are swarming upon us and demanding uh, hours and hours of diligent work and uh, you know we're all modern Instagram artists here. The last thing we want is to have to do any diligent work. So we are by rights executing in the way that is appropriate for our era and copping out. We also have like some nice contrasty like dividing lines on them a lot of the times. Hmm. Always a question what you should do to just wrap up a sketch and leave it be. I'm going to put some more contrasty lines and shapes around the eyes of this beast because they are inevitably the focal point. Just kind of whatever for now. They look more like the graphic shapes for regular human eyes than it would do for anything like a like a crab of man's but you know I got like half a thing of guac left in the fridge so let me get a similar amount of thickness to the pad on this side of the sky I don't know what's going on in this neck hidden neck area here gross gross crab life that's what's going on 
Just some some vile undulating surfaces. Aberrations most hideous. They only could have arisen from the depths. That cursed mire. Well, no, that is not what I wanted. Went on autopilot there and started making typical human shapes. I wanted to make these more square. Hmm. Actually, I kind of made, look, made them look kind of cute. I don't know about that. Well, you live and you learn. Just going to darken up some of these areas in between the plates. And then I'm going to give up because uh, no reason to beat up a tired old sketch forever just for the sake of it. I got the idea out. Well, as I wrap up here, hope you guys are doing good. I know it's been a while since I've posted, but um, I know that you guys know how crazy the world has been and that you guys have been going through the same kinds of shit I've been going through. But I'm glad to have a moment here to get a video out for you guys and to try some new things. Hope you're all taking care of yourselves and drawing. I hope you're taking time to just draw whatever on occasion, you know. Just empty the whole thing out. No goals, no structure, no training mindset. Just take a little bit of time every now and then to just draw. Just do whatever. Don't try to draw like anyone else. Don't even try to draw like yourself. Just sit and do the act and feel and notice what you feel and see what happens. You do that for five, 10 minutes a day, you'll notice some things. Things will start to get slowly more and more interesting. I hope to post more drawing companions soon. I will get there. All right, I'm gonna leave this little sketch here for now. No need to belabor it. And uh, I'm just gonna take a quick moment to uh, let it go. Cool. All right, let's draw again soon.